Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 3z to the power z equals 3 and we're going to be solving for z values. First of all, let's look at it from a very simple perspective, which is what would happen if z was real, right? Then we could probably just take this and cube it, right? And that would give us 27 because 3 cubed is 27. And then we could multiply the exponents, you know the rule, right? And then write the 27 as 3 to the power 3. And 1 to 1 correspondence, ta-da, 3z is equal to 3 and we get z equals 1. Case closed, we're done, right? No. That's just the real deal. Is there any other solutions, any other real solutions besides this? That's for you to find out. I'm going to leave that as an open question. And I will proceed with the complex approach. Okay? So, let's go ahead and take a look at it from a complex or with a complex lens. We have 3z to the power z. By the way, this is a homemade problem because I came up with it. No big deal though, right? Nothing to brag about. We can always come up with these kinds of problems. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. Instead of just doing the uh, cube, cubing trick, which you could probably do with complex numbers too, right? I'm going to follow a different approach. I'm going to use the definition of complex exponentiation. So what is w to the power z if they're both complex numbers, right? And hopefully you should remember this because you use this very many times. This can be written as e to the power z ln w. Now what is ln of a complex number? That's another story. We'll talk about that too. I'll give you a formula for that. ln w, if w is a complex number, is the same thing as ln absolute value of w, which is a real number, by the way, plus i times the argument of w, which is kind of like the theta, right? The angle that it makes. Now, we can go ahead and plug this in if you want and come up with a more general formula like e to the power z times ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. And guess what? This is going to give you a complex number. But we can still work on this and distribute because this is a real value, right? Absolute value of W is real and that is non-negative and that shouldn't be zero either, right? Hopefully. And ln is well defined in the real world and we can just go ahead and multiply. But here's the problem. We don't know what Z is. It's not a scalar in this case. It's kind of like multiplying a vector by another vector. So it'll be more interesting. But if you just uh, set z equal to a plus bi, you can kind of do the following. e to the power a plus bi multiply by ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. And then distribute this. i squared is negative 1, so on and so forth. And you'll end up with a formula for w to the power z. Notice that for w, we used the, a different form. Even though it's standard, we kind of use different things. For z, I just assumed a plus bi. Okay? Make sense? So, let's go ahead and proceed with this rule. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what type of formula you can come up with. This looks kind of complicated, but it's fun at the same time. Hopefully, you feel the same way. But let's go ahead and take it from here. So, now, I can write this as e to the power z ln 3z. And that's equal to 3, right? Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and complexify the right-hand side. Let me go ahead and erase this. Hopefully, you took a good picture, right? A screenshot, because I'm about to erase it. Ready, set, go. And now we're going to go ahead and just, you know, plug this in. So now I have e to the power z ln 3z. And 3 can be written as 3 times e to the power 2 pi and i. That's what 1 is, right? In the complex world, this is actually equivalent to 1 or equal to 1. Now, 3 times 1 is obviously 3. But this is nice because we have e's on both sides and we can bring them down by using the natural log on both sides. 
that's going to give us z ln 3z equals ln 3 plus 2 pi n i. That's kind of like similar to the ln of a complex number. If you remember the formula that I wrote, I erased it obviously, but it contained ln absolute value and then plus the i times the argument. Notice that in this case, the argument happens to be 2 pi n because we are talking about 1, right? And 1 is going to be right here because it's real and positive. Awesome. Now, our goal is to solve for z. So how do we do that? This is our equation. Well, we're going to use a very special function. And this is where the multiplication by 3 comes in. Eventually, I mean, at some point you have to do it. Multiply both sides by 3. And notice that by way of substitution, you can get the same expression. But here we're going to distribute the 3. And we're going to get something like this. Now, 3z and ln 3z, what does that tell you? Let's work on this a little bit more. 3z can actually be written as e to the power ln 3z. That's an identity, right? And this can be written as ln 27 if you want, because this is going to be 3 cubed plus 6 pi and i. Almost there, almost there. What does the left-hand side look like? If you said Lambert's w, you got it. Good job. Now, we're going to go ahead and w both sides with Lambert's w function. And that's going to give us something nice. w of this, and I'll probably remove this too. And that equals w of this. Okay? Cool, cool. What is Lambert's w function though? Well, it's kind of like a very special function. If you apply it on t to the t, you get t. So that's my cup of t, okay? Hope you like t2. Now, if you apply it to this expression right here, this is going to be your t, the entire ln thing. So you're going to get ln 3z from there. On the right hand side, though, you don't get a nice expression because there is no way we can turn this into t to the t. So it's going to have to stay like that. But that's okay. You can plug it into Wolfram Alpha. This is one of the problems that Wolfram Alpha can handle, even though the result looks kind of complicated. Anyways, enough bashing. Now, let's go ahead and solve for z from here. What should I do? Uh, we're going to do e to the power both sides. That's going to cancel out the e, the black pen, red pen way, right? And then 3z equals e to the power w ln 27 plus 6 pi. And I, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, but I'm pretty sure you guessed it n is an integer. You know, some people get mad like when you don't write it, but it's understood hopefully. Okay, so that's 3z. What I need to do next is just divide both sides by 3 and you'll get the answer. You can either write one third in the front or just divide the whole thing by 3, same idea. So let's go ahead and write it this way. e to the power w ln 27 plus 6 pi n i all over 3 and that will be our z value. Great, we arrived at a solution even though that wasn't very nice, but these kinds of equations can only be solved like this. If you want a numerical value, hold on a second, I'm gonna give it to you, about to give it to you. Now, if n is equal to zero, let's go ahead and look at some special cases. You're gonna get z equals e to the power w ln 27 divided by three. As you know, ln 27 is three ln three, so this can be written as e to the power w three ln three from here you should be getting ln3, this should give you ln3, e to the power ln3 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1, so from here z equals 1. For n equals 0, you get the real solution, awesome. And for n equals 1, you get a different solution, and that kind of looks like approximately z is going to be 1.5589 plus 2.2633i. Again, that's another complex number. And this brings us to the end of the video. There's nothing to look at the end because Wolfram Alpha, uh, you know, already gave us a solution, didn't it? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, let me know what you think. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.